Can you imagine what it would be like if we had 10 more safari cars, each contributing 6% of the country's GDP? I think that's the question you should ask, rather than should you just cut safari come down to size and let it contribute less than 6%. I mean, if you're American or if you're a German or if you're any European country, you would say, how can we create many, many more safari comes rather than how can you destroy a safari come because you think it's contributing too much to, um, to the economy? Okay, so there are three questions there. The first thing is, how do I feel about it? I feel pretty angry about it because my team come to work and they do their job. Everybody knows what the job was. Uh, and then you get some false accusations and you drag their names in the media. And, you know, I've been really disappointed, actually, that we've seen the names two nights running. You pop their names up because you forget that they have families, right? Uh, you actually put their lives and their families' lives at risk. So that's the first thing. Um, uh, am I going to be intimidated away from providing the, uh, from playing a role in the elections, the upcoming elections? No. Safaricom does not find itself intimidated by anyone and by anything. We believe we have a role to play together with the other mobile operators and we will continue to play that role. We're not going to be intimidated by that. And finally, how is um, foreign investors looking at it? Well, the uncertainty is not good. If you look at um, the uncertainty and the, and the prolonged period of the uncertainty, you know, first of all, you got the elections, the run up to the August elections, and then it's going to be the 17th of October, then it's going to be the 26th of October. Um, you know, that's not helpful to the economy, and neither is it helpful to the perception of Kenya as an investment. Uh, an investment destination and, and you know I've been here now for seven years I think we have fantastic potential but if we keep tripping ourselves up it's not going to be good for us. Oh, Safaricom as well as the two other operators will continue to take part in this because it is essential that we have electronic transmission and if Telcom, Airtel and Safaricom does not trans transmit the results then you don't get results transmission and we're not going to be intimidated from not uh, from not taking part in it. And so, yeah, we are going to do it. I mean, and absolutely, we need to be absolutely clear about this, that Safaricom remains committed to the IEBC in line with the contract we have with them to relay the results from the CHEMS device to whichever server IEBC wants us to relay it to. No, of course, they're not going to take any action. I mean, and that's a, it's a silly question because, as I said at the beginning, you know, these are innocent members of staff who just came to do their jobs and to put their names into the political arena at a time when the temperature is so high. I have had to double up on their security for them and for their families. And let me ask you a question. How would you feel if it was your brother? How would you feel if it was your brother and his wife and his children who are now exposed to this kind of risk because of a political agenda? I'm urging all political sides to just to stick to politics and to leave companies and businesses out of this. So there's no action I'm going to take against my people. The, CI, the DCI will conduct this investigation and if anything is found to be done wrong, I am the one who should be prosecuted, not my team. And I open myself. I say, prosecute me. Don't pick my innocent team. And don't put their names in the newspapers. Don't put their pictures in the newspapers. And don't expose their families unnecessarily. I will hold whoever, if any harm comes to any of my people, I will hold people personally responsible for that. And so, I mean, let's be very clear about that. It's not funny.